What's up, guys? We are live on June 14th. It is a Wednesday. In today's live, I want to talk about marriage. Okay, so let's go over some pros, some cons, some considerations for those of you that plan on getting married, right? Or that, you know, have a girl you're considering getting married to, okay? <clears throat> now, it should go without saying that if you're going to get married in the West, that you should do financial separation, okay? Don't let a girl try to talk you into, you know, like I've heard a lot of like rich friends, for instance, they're like, well, Megan thinks that it would be going in with the wrong attitude if we were to do a prenup. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's nice, but do it anyways, right? And they're like, well, no, Megan really doesn't want to do it, and so we're not going to do it. I'm like, okay, that's fucking stupid, right? Just use common sense, first of all. So in the U.S. and in a lot of Western nations, right, and this isn't like some red pill ranting or anything like that. I'm just stating the facts of how they are. You just need to be smart and protect yourself. Okay, the courts oftentimes favor the women, and if the guy is the sole breadwinner or you know making more money, he should protect himself financially by doing a prenuptial agreement. Okay, like I got married in Brazil to Liz, and we did like a full separation of assets. Like in Brazil, it's called like. Uh, separation like totals de bens like totals like all benefits separated it's like a full clean thing like her shit's hers my shit's mine right she stopped working her engineering job to spend more time at home and to be with the dogs and, and spend more time around the house with me and stuff like that um but we did a, a thing where it just separates all assets right then you're protected if things go south you're protected so that's that's item number one okay is is at the very least I recommend that all people get a prenuptial agreement and it's only fair, right? If any of this talk about like, oh, we're going in with the wrong mindset, it's only fair, right? What's yours is yours, what her, what's hers is hers. So that's item number one. Item number two, make sure you're not getting married for the wrong reasons. I think this is, this is a very interesting and important topic. So a lot of people hit like this convergence of factors, okay? So they hit like, okay, all my friends are starting to get married um my parents want grandkids i'm not getting any younger i'm not really meeting many people anymore and i get along good enough with this girl i'm dating or this this girl it's my girlfriend and i you know I, I guess i could see it working maybe she's not my ideal partner but it's good enough blah 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 right so i i see like all these like converging pressures i've seen this like with my friends different relatives even different clients just from my life experience, and I see a lot of the same pattern. People will justify going and committing to someone for a lifetime, which is a huge fucking deal. Like you need to realize that too. Like if you're committing to someone for a lifetime, that's a huge decision, right? It's gonna be one of the most important decisions of your life. If you get involved for the long term with the wrong person, you're gonna waste a bunch of time. If you bring kids into that mix, that's irresponsible to them. It's gonna fuck their lives up potentially Okay. Um, so you need to, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a really fucking big decision. Right. And, and the girl's going to lose her looks too, you know, most likely like, like with Liz, um, it's nice because a lot of Brazilian genetics, like, I like there's a lot of girls in Brazil, like in their forties and fifties that still look ultra hot in their forties and fifties. If you, the girl takes good care of themselves, eats decent, exercises regularly, has good genetics, then they're going to stay hot well into their 40s and 50s. Plus with all the enhancements coming down the pipeline for aesthetics, you know, stem cell treatments, uh, different laser things. Like just even a few months ago, I had like more pronounced uh, like sleep lines on my face and I'm using this cream and I'm doing like once a month like laser treatment to firm the skin up with more collagen and stuff like that. And that's rapidly fading, right? But that might not have been possible many years in the past, right? It definitely wasn't possible. So as technology gets better and better, the ability to stay looking young and healthy will only increase as well. So like, again, in my case with Liz, 
she should stay hot like through her 30s through her 40s i met her when she was 27 now she's 30 and you know she still looks young and and she'll be able to do different cosmetic procedures to stay looking young and has good genetics and takes good care of herself and all that stuff so but you know with a lot of other girls like let, let's look at my uncle's wife for instance right she was like a hot blonde with big tits when they got married and he said that once they got married she started eating a lot of ice cream junk food drinking a lot of soda and she got fat right and he said like when they were just dating when it was just his girlfriend he had leverage that if she would let herself go that he would fucking leave right and once you're married you lose that leverage so now she like eats a bunch of junk food drinks a lot of soda and he's like why don't you be healthier and she's like well fuck you you know stuff like that and it's like wow like that sucks so then he has to just deal with that and they have a kid in the mix <clears throat> right so um you know just just things to consider but like some of the smartest teachers I've ever had like some of the smartest philosophy teachers I've ever had they ended up with companions without doing the whole legal mumbo jumbo like you can have it's just a fucking stupid label it's just a it's just a stupid contract right and yeah there's tax benefits and stuff like that but that stuff aside you know without having to need that label or need any tax benefits you can have a deep relationship with someone and like these two philosophy teachers that i'm referencing they had <clears throat> for all intents and purposes a wife but they didn't make it a legal contract and they just call it their life partner okay so if things don't work out you didn't enter into any kind of messy legal arrangement with a contract okay and what you don't want to happen is to get fucked over not just financially but like here's a story for instance and again this isn't supposed to be like a gloom and doom live like oh you know like uh you know all all people all girls you marry are going to try to fuck you over and no this isn't a dumb red pill rant okay based on false statistics but like there exist situations in the u.s like i know i know of a, of a situation where a guy like he was the sole breadwinner right he's providing for the family the woman's staying at home they had a bunch of kids he built a house from scratch for them like you know putting the kids through school and, and all this stuff providing for everyone financially came home early from work one day the wife had a different guy over the guy's like running out the back door with his pants half down so he goes to get a divorce even though the wife cheated and the wife is the one that fucked up he loses the house he loses most of the custody to the kids now the daughter's dating like some you know like ghetto drug dealer and he has no ability to, to stop that and he's got to pay this woman alimony and child support even though like the new guy she's with makes a lot of money right so now he's being taxed on his income he lost his house he lost his kids for the most part for no reason okay no good reason um and that's how it goes a lot of the time so i would offer you know i would i would put out a, a high word of caution that as i always recommend on my channel that you think things through critically and try to remove emotions as much as you can as much as humanly possible from the equation and weigh all the pros and cons but regardless of your situation as i said multiple times get a prenup make sure that you're getting married for the right reasons and also explore the idea of just having it as like a life partner without the label okay in, in brazil i wanted to have residence and stuff like that so we did the formal the formal marriage thing right but it's it, for all intents and purposes it's, it's like i'm single because i still go on dates regularly i still meet girls in cold approach all the time i still meet girls online all the time i still have a big rotation etc so we're technically married but you know for all intents and purposes it, it stays the same as if i'm single so um i'm you know again like what i've what i've noticed and i'm an analyzer is that let's say let's say we have a guy mike okay let's just use like an example mike is turning 30 he sees all his friends around him getting married his parents are like hey mike when are you going to settle down with a, with a nice girl or, or hey you've been dating jenny for a year uh why don't you just propose to jenny we'd like some grandkids so he's like okay i'm not really meeting anyone anymore i'm not really going out anymore i'm not getting any younger my friends are all getting married. I've been with Jenny for about a year. She's not my ideal partner, but like good enough. 
you know, we, we get along okay, I guess. I'm comfortable with Jenny. And people will, like, marginally justify these things. They're like, I've been with this girl a year. And they also have, like, this, like, you know, maybe I won't do any better kind of scared mindset as well, kind of coming from a scarcity point because most people don't have a lot of options. And so maybe they're like, well, maybe, you know, I won't, I'll never be able to do better than Jenny. Plus I'm comfortable with Jenny. It's uncomfortable to go through a breakup and be lonely and get back out there and try to meet a new girl again. Um, why don't I just propose to Jenny? Right. And so a lot of guys go through that and I've seen tons of guys go through that. And, it, and they're not thinking like, I can never picture myself with anyone else. This is my ideal woman, right? I can see myself with this girl forever for all these reasons that are unrelated to these outside pressures, but instead they cave to these outside pressures. Well, society says that I should get married and raise a family and I don't want to be an old dad raising a family and Jenny's going to lose her look soon and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not meeting anyone else and, and my parents want grandkids and all my friends are married. And so they, put all this pressure on themselves to get married. And was that done for the right reasons? Probably not. Almost certainly not. And then what happens is reality sets in, right? Maybe they go through the honeymoon phase and they're like, well, this is cool. I'm married now, blah, blah, blah. But like, what's the divorce statistics now? Right? I think it's uh, what percentage of Americans get divorced. Okay. And some of you are not in America, but um, it's between 40 and 50%. Okay. So almost half it's higher in some, some other countries, but that's a big percentage and that's fucking wasted time. And maybe you brought kids into the mix and now it's messy for them. And why, you know, why set yourself up for that? Right. If a lot of these, and that's just the reported statistic of, you know, close to 50%. What about all the people that are staying together because they don't want to go to hell? All the people that are very religious, like in the Catholic Church, which is very predominant in a lot of Western cultures, they say that if you get divorced, you go to hell. A lot of people believe that. So a lot of people stay together when they shouldn't, right? Just because they don't want to go to hell or because they don't want to fuck up the kids' lives or they don't think they'll be able to find another person again. So they stay in a bad or toxic situation out of fear of not being able to get in it, right? So there, there's a lot of kind of the main points I wanted to make is be smart, like 100% non-negotiable, get a prenup if you're going to get married. But also consider the path of just doing a life partner thing where you don't introduce this complicated legal contract. And then if things don't work out, you guys can part your separate ways amicably without having to deal with divorce lawyers, which can be costly, without having to you know, deal with the, the whole mess of someone potentially taking your assets or, you know, all the custody of your kids and stuff like that. So ask yourself these questions, like apart from all these pressures from society and your family and your friends getting married and getting older and all these different things. Um, and you also need to think of like, and this is maybe like outside of a lot of your considerations and maybe you don't even want to consider this, but with technology changing so fast, right? Like the traditional familial unit paradigm is not going to hold true much longer. In my opinion, I think we're going to progressively start spending more and more time in virtual worlds. And, you know, like I think people will have more increasing relationships and even sexual relationships with virtual characters or even ro robotic apparatus, right? Like, so there's all those considerations as well. And, and just all like the way that the world is going to be rapidly changing over the next bunch of years, you have to, you have to take all this stuff into account, right? So I'm, I'm just basically encouraging everyone to, to critically think through what could arguably be one of the most important decisions of their life and do it for the right reasons. Don't do it because your parents are pressuring you. Don't do it because all your friends are getting married. Don't do it because society says that's the next step you should take. Okay, for the record, like monogamy is not even natural. Monogamy is, is not the natural state in Homo sapiens. Okay, that's a fact. I've done extensive research on this. And what they found is that Homo sapiens, humans, our species, are meant to have one main partner and a bunch of side partners, much like the structure of a rotation. Whereas, and that's for men, as a female, she's meant to stay with just one guy. So traditionally, anthropological, 
logically looking back through human history at the records, most societies would have the man as promis promiscuous, polyamorous, and the woman as monogamous. That's traditionally how it existed. Now, this like pure monogamy on both sides is not natural, and it doesn't exist in our brains. There's a part of our brain responsible for monogamy, and humans don't have it. There's certain monkey species that only ever have one partner ever, and they've tinkered with that part of their brain that they've found is related to monogamy, and then they go and start fucking everybody. So um, I think since it's so unnatural, that in part explains why the divorce rate is so high. It was mostly shoved down our throats, monogamy that is, uh, in marriage as well by the church and the state, which used to be more tightly coupled. And, you know, this familiar unit structure is easier to control. It's better for society, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not necessarily natural. So just take all that into account, right? So consider the path of doing the life partner without a legal contract. Same shit without all the fucking, you know, hassle of, of repercussions that have to come along with a divorce, including paying for a divorce lawyer, doing divorce proceedings, potentially losing assets or, ch or child custody, et cetera. Um, consider that, but also consider that you're doing it for the right reasons, right? And try, even though you should marry a girl that's hot, try to see if she can stand on her own apart from her looks, right? Because you also don't want to marry a girl that has like a fucking empty personality um, and don't think that all hot girls are bad, like red, red pill girls tells you, but red pill people tell you, but make sure the girl can stand on her own merits apart from her looks. Okay. Like for Liz, like here's a lot of qualities that I value. I'm very selective with the main girl or the girlfriend that I have and what they were Liz, right? She's bisexual. She's intelligent. She's analytical. She's hyper analytical. Like me, she's an engineer. Like I used to be, I used to be a systems engineer. She was a civil engineer. Um, she's sweet. She's fun. She comes from a good family. She has a good heart. She wasn't fucking guys on the first date. She has a low body count, was mostly in relationships. I've never caught her lying. She, um, you know, has, has a good moral system. She's loving and sweet to the dogs, takes care of me well, right? Supportive, um, has a good sense of humor. We make lots of stupid jokes together. She's understanding and supportive of my lifestyle, which is a big one. Um, even though it had its plenty of trial and tribulations and growing pains, right? it's not easy for to watch your boyfriend be a, you know, international playboy and, and be railing girls all the time right in your face. Um, now I've had a side place for most of years, so it's a little easier for her to handle that. Um, and, it, and it just goes on and on. Like she has ambitions, like she's cool. Like, you know, we can, we can share a lot of goals together and, you know, there, so you can have like a big long list of things you look for in a partner and you don't have to settle for second best or you don't have to settle for like okay well this girl only has like some of the things i'm looking for or none of the things i'm looking for but i don't have any other options so i'm just going to get more serious with this one okay so again like i don't have a whole lot more to say than that um uh, i'm not going to say sit here and tell you don't get married just don't get married for the wrong reasons don't get married from these outside pressures don't get married because society tells you that that's what you should do and if you do decide to get married, 100% get a prenup and make sure that you this girl matches most, if not all, of the things you're looking for. And don't sell yourself short. Like if you think like, oh, I'd like to do better, but I can't. I'd like a hotter girl, but I can't get a hotter girl. Yes, you can. You just have to up your skills, up how you carry yourself, up how you bring yourself to the table. And I get client after client, day after day, telling me, you know, I never thought I'd be able to get a girl like this. I never thought I'd be able to get my dream girlfriend. And I did. Thank you so much. Like I owe you everything, blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, that's part in part why, why I love doing this job. Um, but don't, don't think that like, you know, this is the best I'm going to do, or this is the only option I have. So I'm just going to settle down with it. I've seen that far too many times. And that's a very sad state of affairs. Okay. You don't need to do that. You just need to level up your skills. And, and how you carry yourself, and then you'll have, have that access. Um, let me look at some questions here quickly just to cycle through some of this stuff. Um, and just a couple of really quick announcements. We have a, <clears throat> a San Diego boot camp being run by Josh this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There are There's one spot left. Okay, that was full, 
And then a guy had a conflict. One of the guys on the program has kids and there was a conflict. One of his kids like needed to do something for their school or, or something. I don't remember what the fucking thing was, but he had to reschedule. So now there's an open spot. The program starts in two days. Um, we're potentially willing to let someone on at a discount, right? We have a lot of people interested in boot camps. So we're reaching out to those people, but it is last minute. But if you have interest in that, <clears throat> email me at john and john anthony lifestyle.com. We're also down to one spot officially on Miami, and that's not a marketing gimmick at all. Um, we had nine spots on there, and someone else had a conflict, and there is literally one spot left on that. Okay, the eighth guy just signed his contract. And so there literally is one more spot. There's about 12 people considering that spot, um, but it's first come, first serve. So as soon as that spot is taken, <clears throat> we rented a, a full scale like MTV crib style mansion for the event. I just put together a full itinerary for the five day immersion in Miami. It's July 5th through 9th. It's going to be my best training ever by far. I'm covering the whole game process. We're doing lots of day game and night game. Josh will be there with me. It's officially confirmed. And Connor for my team. Okay, Connor is 600 plus lay count. Josh is 700 plus. I'm sitting at 1,662. So it's about 3,000 lay count worth of experience. And I've known both those. I've known Connor since 2012 and Josh since 2013. <clears throat> so these are decade long close friends who did their whole journey through the game with me. And they're extremely, extremely skilled. But the next best guys I know in the game. So if you have interest in joining that Miami immersion, email me ASAP here if you have interest in joining the three-day san diego boot camp just email me i'll go over the the pricing options with you um send that email asap san diego boot camp miami uh immersion okay san diego boot camp is this weekend friday saturday sunday 16th to the 18th miami immersion is july 5th through 9th okay and as always we have our eight-week program here you can book a call or go to platinumdatingsystem.com okay so <clears throat> someone said i used to like valuetainment after watching them suck up to Tate, yeah, quite frankly, that's that's absolutely disgusting. Okay, no, there's no way to to sugarcoat that. They've shown that they're openly willing to associate and you know metaphorically dick suck a known, like massively horrible person. Okay, in the Tates, I'm gonna do a video about this. I think the Tates just got a more serious upgrade on their charges. Okay, and the, and the articles I've been reading lately say they have charges filed on them. Okay, he keeps saying there's no charges filed. It's one of the things was human trafficking, and they've upgraded that to human trafficking with ca continuity or with continuance or something is the official legal term. It's like a more hardcore form of trafficking. And there's another victim that's come forward that's now in the case as well. I think there's six total alleged victims now. So... For, for Patrick Bet David and Adam Sosnick to fly out to Romania and sit there in the top cheese house and, you know, glorify him in the way that they did. I haven't watched the interview yet, but a whole bunch of people said that they, they were just kissing his ass the whole time. That's quite frankly disgusting and like the definition of selling out. Uh, again, there's no way, there's no way, better way to put it, unfortunately. But they've already shown they're, they're okay with doing that, right? After Myron did the disgusting display of racism in the in the Ku Klux Klan hood on camera and has been openly platforming guys that have been discovered like, either admitting out in the fresh and fit show that they've graped girls <clears throat> or it being leaked in DMs um, as was shown with some other characters value Tayman had them on their show right after that okay again I refuse to collaborate with scammers ever. I refuse to collaborate with pieces of shit ever. When I went on Valuetainment, I knew that they were platforming a lot of guys that I hate and that I shit talk for good reason. But Adam Sosnick was holding kind of a neutral stance in the manosphere, saying that he likes to have everyone to have a voice and stuff like that. But it's a very fine line when you start allying with guys like Tate, who's objectively done a lot of horrible shit okay and it objectively admitted to lots of criminal activity and as an update in those articles i've been reading lately <clears throat> they said that not only did the tate's charges get upgraded and a new victim came forward but they're looking to commence trial proceedings in romania towards the end of june that's less than two weeks away okay they originally reported that they're they're slating to get a trial going by july hopefully <clears throat> 
within the next one month or so, there will be the commencement of the trial. And I will report on that as appropriate. But yeah, I mean, Patrick Bet David obviously likes attention and likes views above all else. Okay. He made his little stunt publicity stunt video about how they offered Tucker Carlson a hundred million dollar deal across five years. And he's reading out the the email letter to Tucker and you know, trying to posture and position and all this stuff. Now he's gonna go be buddy buddy with with a guy that's inflicted tons of pain and damage on society, which says a lot about them. Okay. Um yeah, again, alliances like, like MLD, who I'm suing in two different countries, and I have an active lawsuit against two different countries um, for lots of defamation, a whole shit ton. Screenshots came out that were allegedly by him that allege, you know, I have no opinion on this one way or another, given that I have a legal case with him, but they allege that he stated that he looks forward to the day that he can walk through the streets and, and sipping a latte watching women be raped in the streets okay and alleged admissions of him partaking in that behavior as well so <clears throat> not a good look and pearl is buddies with him again i don't condone that at all i don't i, I don't i don't know what to say right like it is it is a sad state of affairs that these shitheads unite and stuff like that. But to see platforms like Valuetainment and, and just pearly things where I spoke on both those shows aligning and endorsing criminal behavior or alleged criminal behavior is very sad, okay? To say the least. Valuetainment has been sucking up to Tate way more than Sartain ever did to Rolo, Fresh and Fitter, and Cook. Five-hour interview where they pretend to ask hard questions while dodging all the incriminating stuff. Yeah, and, and he tried to give BBC a bunch of flack for just pointing out the factual things surrounding the criminal allegations, and he dodged everything completely. Um, okay, going back to the topic at hand, personally, I hope I don't catch feelings for a chick anytime soon. Can't imagine losing the freedoms I have right now, spending time on my hobbies, my craft, freedom to date around, etc. And don't, again, this is exactly my point. Don't feel pressured to get married, okay? I think that is why a lot of people get married is because society says you get a full-time job, maybe you try to buy a house with a 30-year mortgage, you find a girl, you propose to her, and like it's already all like scripted out for you and everyone's like, okay, uh, what's next on my list here? Fuck all that, okay? That's why I'm a huge fan of Nietzsche's teachings, Go and define your own purpose in life. Go and define your own values in life based on, on power and autonomy and strength and your and, and personal responsibility and your own passions and, and desires and make these decisions from a point of critical thought. Don't just get swept along with the tide. <clears throat> like, for instance, okay, this is, this is not related to marriage, but like when I was working as a system engineer for Lockheed Martin, IBM offered me a 50% pay raise to work from home, but it was a contract position. It was like a year and a half contract with the option to extend. But the Lockheed Martin job was a union job. I was part of an engineering union and it's really hard to get fired out of the engineering union. I was like a star there anyways, but like I basically I had like job security till retirement if I wanted it. And my parents were like, just stay there till retirement. It's a good company. It's reputable. It's a good job, blah, blah, blah. If you go to IBM, even though it's more money, it's uncertain. It's a fixed contract and <clears throat> you're giving up, you know, the, the 401k stuff and blah, 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 blah. I said, I don't give a shit. I'd rather have my freedom and work from home and not have a commute, not be stuck in an office, listening to people drone on about sports and, and the barbecue there at this past weekend and have my life back. Right. And so I took the IBM job and uh, I ended up getting fired from there about like a year later because I was doing too much game stuff. And when they fired me, I moved to Vegas and kind of doubled down on the pickup stuff again against my parents' will, right? But now I don't have a boss. I don't have an office. I make my own hours. I can live anywhere I want. I make far more than I would have as a, as a corporate wage slave, right? And and it wasn't a, a popular path, right, to, to go and make dating coaching work. But I made it work and I'm much happier as a result, right? So don't think that you have to 
the same thing when I switched to philosophy, right? I, I was just a computer science major. My parents were like, just become the programmer that you set out to be and you'll make a good wage and you know, you'll have a nice life and not a hard life. I said, well, you know, that's all well and good, but I really love philosophy. Oh, philosophy is for deadbeats that couldn't make it in other professions. Actually, that's false. Quite to the contrary, a lot of philosophy professors that I met and, and became close friends with uh, forwent, or, you know, uh, passed up on lucrative jobs and tech careers and other such industries that are very advantageous to capitalism so that they could focus on intellectual pursuits and, and you know, the stuff that made them more fulfilled and satisfied, very sharp, very capable guys. And if you look at like graduate record, you know, GREs, graduate was a graduate record exam and like the LSAT and stuff like that, philosophy majors score like the best or second best on all those exams. They score higher on the, the business exam than business majors. Um, I think they score second highest on the LSAT, only second to physics. Um, same with the GRE. I think physics and, and philosophy are like the two majors that score the best. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a popular decision there to go to a field that isn't advantageous to capitalism, but I have no regrets about that either. So you can't just get stuck thinking, okay, I have to get a job next at a corporate place. I have to go get married because that's what's been defined for me, right? Instead, you just want to make these decisions from a point of critical thinking, okay, on your own. So um, my business partners in town visiting. Uh, <laughs> that was him in the background there. So just make sure that you, you make these decisions, right? Like from, from something that you want to do, right? If you, when you weigh the pros and cons, you like your freedoms. You like to be able to spend your time and date around. Don't get married right now. If that changes later, weigh the pros and cons again. Make sure that you're not doing it for the wrong reasons. If you decide to get married, make sure you get a prenup and, and just think these things through. That's my general life advice on everything. When you're learning game, think these things through. If the guy you're following has no pictures with girls, has no infield, has no testimonials, don't watch his shit anymore. If you've tried his content for any extended period of time and it's not working, don't watch his shit anymore. Okay, it's very simple. So regardless of his popularity, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean that that value tainment interview with the Tate with with Tate got six million views already. I just looked this morning. So, again, they can put on a suit, they can go preach about all the, you know, values and virtues that make a man, and what defines you know a, a proper place in society and all that horseshit. Yeah, you want to go fucking suck the dick of a of a known horrible bad actor? Go suck his dick, okay? But then don't go masquerade as as this upholder of virtue and all this other nonsense. I never masquerade as an upholder of virtue, but I don't fucking associate with pieces of shit. Okay, there's a huge difference. A huge difference in a man's convictions and principles, and what he's willing to do to sacrifice those in order to make money and get views. Okay, I will never do that. Okay, I've been there with the chick getting fat in a long-term relationship. Um, yeah, I mean, that was very, like, good advice when my uncle said, like, you know, that he had some kind of leverage in the fact that he could break up with her. He's like, you know, if she pulled some shit before, I'd, like, put her in her place, and if she would keep pulling the shit, I could just walk away. If she would go and eat a whole bunch of fucking junk food and all the time and blew up and wait, I could, you know, give her some positive encouragement. If she continued, I could walk away. Once you're married, good luck. Okay, what are you, you going to do? You're going to go through divorce proceedings because she gained some weight. You're going to go through some divorce proceedings because she's, you know, talking back and disrespecting and this kind of stuff. Uh, on some level, you're just going to have to eat shit. Okay, so... Take that into consideration when you go to get married, right? Common sense. So this isn't like, oh, all women are going to try to fuck you over. No, no, far from it. But 
just know the change in power dynamics. Just know what your options are once you've gone down that road. <laughs> um, this is called bioresonance. There's a TED talk about shattering cancer cells with bioresonant frequencies by this musician. And he acts like he like pioneered this technology, but it, it was actually invented by a guy named Royal Raymond Reif. Um, you can look up his, his experiments with child curing uh, terminal child cancer. And you, just think of it like every cell in groups of cells has a certain frequency and they've de determined like which frequency like prostate cancer is at, which frequency other things are at, viruses that are behind Lyme disease and so on and so forth. And you can send inverse signals that cause the cell to implode. And they show it in that TED talk under a microscope, how it actually looks. <clears throat> so it's precise, it's without side effects, and it's very effective. Okay, so I, I, use, I do bioresonance regularly. It's like a full system scan of your entire body, much like you would scan like a computer. Um, okay. Let's keep going here. And I, and I will react to the value attainment interview. I'm just not going to fucking, I mean, maybe I will watch the whole thing just to, you know, be disgusted, but I'm having some friends and, and community uh, connections go through and just point out relevant timestamps that are interesting to comment about. And so I might just do like a cut up of the most interesting parts and comment on that. Um, okay. What are the hardest cities for dating in North America? Like, look at these examples here. San Fran, Toronto, and LA are all giant cities with a fuck ton of girls. No city is hard <clears throat> if your game is good. Put me in any city and I'll destroy. Put any client I've trained in any city and they'll destroy. Don't worry about the city. It's, it's, it's insane that guys will go literally go to the length of blaming the city, right? And no matter which city they're blaming, like I, I know guys that are getting laid a fuckload there, or I've gotten laid a fuckload there. Um, and like I said, monogamy is not natural, and that's a proven fact. Um, we're not meant to be monogamous as humans. Yeah, that's true too. It, he's just always performing on camera, trying to be the man. Uh, that shit's fucking annoying, right? I might go back on value attainment. I don't know. But, yeah, what a surprise. Again, where there's smoke, there's fire. It's a good fucking thing to keep in mind. Um, there's various pricing. Get on the phone ASAP because we're trying to fill the San Diego spot within the next two days. So we might offer a discount. Um, what's up? Is he all set up in the other room with his computer? What? Is he all set up in the other room with his computer? Um, I'm just gonna get back to the time. Okay. And then we need that to Okay. Um, <clears throat> there is a potential issue with Josh coming to Brazil. Like, basically, he didn't get his fucking passport renewed in time. There was like some complication. So I don't know if he's actually gonna end up coming down but he is running miami 100 with me july 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th we'll be filming infield during that so it will be new usa infield and we will also be um <clears throat> filming the whole event okay and he will be co-coaching that with me and so we will be doing lots of you know podcast stuff um training stuff infield stuff together and we'll we'll tease some of that on the channel um but he'll be, he'll be down to Brazil at some point. If he doesn't come now, there's a chance he'll get his passport. But if he doesn't end up being able to make that work out, he'll be back or he'll, he'll be rescheduling it to come back, to come down soon. Um, let's see. Oh, what do you got? Oh, no. no what do you got? Um, let's see. Why do you think grifters get into the dating space? There's easier ways to make money. Um, let's look at a couple people that have, have admitted to coming into the space just for money. Look at Casey Zander. OK, 
Okay, Casey Zander made a video. He had just gotten like dumped and he came on camera and he's like, a lot of you guys have been wondering, Uncle C, why are you so sad? And he's like, well, I'm human too, guys. I just went through a hard breakup and I'm like devastated and blah, blah, blah. And he had like a moment of weakness and he's like, he's like, just so everyone knows, I came into this space just to make money and I don't care about dating at all. And I was like, holy fuck. He admitted to it. And I made a reaction video. He later deleted the video, okay, because he, he realized what a mistake he had made telling his viewers about that. He thought he would like gain some sympathy by being upfront about his crooked intentions. I wish they would all do that, right? So we could just be like, hey, look at this highlight reel of all the, you know, a lot of them won't come out and say that. They'll, they'll say that behind closed doors. I have screenshots from various people that I can't, again, I'm in legal battles with, with one of them. But I have screenshots of them literally saying to people like, Hey, I have like don't really know what I'm doing here, but I I I think people would like believe me if I gave them advice. Like, how fucked is that? Right? They're literally they know they don't know shit about the game. They don't they know they suck with girls, but it's very easy for anyone to go on camera and pretend that they do. Very easy. Okay, they can go on, and this particular person I'm mentioning also copied like eight people's courses. So instead of like, and he was driving taxis before that. Okay, what's more lucrative? Driving a fucking taxi around and teaching English as well. And you, you can probably uh, guess who I'm speaking about. Okay, Mr. Endure, who I'm suing. Driving taxis, teaching English, then realizes he can just go copy like eight different courses and pretend that he's an expert. Does he have to show any pictures with girls? No. Does he have to show any infield? No. Does he have to show any testimonials? No. He just has to go on and talk a bunch of shit. And then people are going to buy his courses. Okay. And Casey Zander said he just came in here to generate leads and customers. And he doesn't give a shit about dating. Right. Jesse from Endless Options, who used to be part of Simple Pickup, the Indian guy, Jesse, he had a company, as I just said, called Endless Options. And he abandoned that to go sell a crypto offer because he could make more money selling crypto. But wait, Jesse, I thought you were a, a world-class dating coach. No, never was. He was just a good marketer. All the fucking embarrassing, technically, you know, technical trash fire cold approach pickup they did with the company Simple Pickup was just for fucking entertainment. It was basically like a prank channel. Okay. <clears throat> um, and I did a video about Jesse as a side note where his seeking arrangement profile was found and he literally says in his seeking arrangement profile, in case you were a simple pickup or endless options fan, and, and it wasn't enough to hear that he left this space to go sell a crypto offer, which I know behind the scenes. That motherfucker made a seeking arrangement profile that said he's looking for a girl to see two times a month and he will pay them five figures. So if you translate that, it means he's offering to pay a girl at a minimum $5,000 per meetup. At a minimum, because keep in mind, five figures spans all the way up to 99K as well, 99K, 999. So he's offering to pay a girl anywhere between five and 50K a hangout. What a fucking loser. Okay. Tell us on endless options. Get the fuck out of here. Um, okay. Sure. Um, Yeah, I got the fucking dating stuff unlocked. Bulldog mindset is good for, you know, transformation, mindset things, uh, finance, investing, and Jay Vincent for fitness. And Jay Vincent is officially partnered with our brand. Uh, Bulldog mindset, we're still in talks about that, working out how that would look. And someone says, what's up, Joseph? Uh, the one thing that he agrees with Red Pill about is that it favors chicks. Get a prenup. Protect yourself. If you don't want to open yourself up to the disadvantages that come up with the legal contract of marriage, look into, um, what's it called? Um, look into doing like the life partner thing without the legal contract, okay? Um, cool. If I want to live life on my own terms, is marriage a burden? Um, it depends, right? Like, I can live life on my own terms. I'm married, technically. Um, it's all about how you define it, 
right? I, I was very upfront with Liz that it's not in the cards for me to stop seeing other girls. It's not in the cards for me to stop doing cold approach. It'll never be. I'm never going to fucking, I, I've basically become the equivalent of a chess grandmaster in this game here. And to become a chess grandmaster and put away the chessboard would be a tragedy. Okay. I can't fucking turn the switch off now and put my balls in a jar. When I like Paul Jenka, for instance, on one of my lives, Paul Jenka was a New York City day game legend, banged out like 250 girls, got married to a British girl, lives in London now, had a kid, is planning having another. He says on the live that he had to like actively kill parts of himself. He said he couldn't be in the company of an attractive woman without act actively like not literally salivating, but you know, kind of being like, uh, like it was like feeding time is like the exact quote he used. And I don't really want to kill those parts of me, to be honest. And I don't think I could, <laughs> to be honest as well. It's kind of like who I am. Um, and I'm not ashamed of that, right? I, I, I take full ownership of the fact that I like to fuck hot chicks and, and always will. And I think other people feel the same way, but society tells them you can't do that. Well, first of all, their game prevents them from doing that, their lack thereof, I should say. And that's also a contributing factor into men just deciding to get married. Say you're dating some fat chick. Say you have no game. Say you're not meeting any more girls and you think maybe this is the best you can do. And you just want to make a grandkid to make your mom happy. Okay, so you marry this fat chick and then you're fucking hating your life every second. You don't have to go that route. Okay, you can learn game. You can have a bunch of options. You can choose from place of abundance. And you also don't ever need to do the legal contract, right? But you can if you are smart about it and protect yourself with a prenup and negotiate terms and, and lifestyle and stuff like that that's going to make both of you happy okay um i mean traditionally the way virgins are losing their virginia in my course is we revamp their online profile they plug into my tinder message scripts they get a bunch of phone numbers they plug into my text message scripts they get a bunch of dates some of the dates are straight to the house they usually end up losing their virginia with a date straight to the house but that being said some lose it through cold approach we had one guy lose a virginia through a day game pull which was like, which is actually a little bit more complicated. <laughs> yeah, can't officially comment about that. Maybe I'll see him and his, his little trusty dog in Miami getting blown out. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> um, you know, it's not that you should get it from online game, but that, you know, it's, it's kind of an easier path than cold approach, all things considered. Because... After you revamp your profile and get the match, plug into the scripts, get the phone number, plug into the scripts, have a girl come to your house, it's like you've gone to the end state just leveraging my system. Whereas with cold approach, more of it is on you. You're still leveraging my system, but there's a lot more things you have to get into place to make it work successfully. Um, I know a child will be a burden for you. What about your bloodline and having... I don't really give a fuck about that. I, you know, and all... I don't care if my genetics continue, even though I guess I should because of evolution. In a, in a practical sense, I care about myself and I care about my loved ones and my friends. I don't really give a shit that my genetics continue, to be honest. And in a way, like, you know, since I'm creating all these artifacts with videos and um, trainings and different stuff like that, like, even if I were to die, like, that will live on much like genetic material would. Um, yeah, I have a, a really skilled coach that's based in Oslo, Norway. We just ran a program this past weekend in Krakow, Poland. Um, so, you know, if you have interest in, in doing a, a European boot camp um, or anywhere in the world, we can run them anywhere in the world. Email me here at john at johnanthonylifestyle.com. Um, I think Justin Mark is a total fucking loser. He hit me up in 2018 and asked me to coach him. I refused. It's hilarious. These guys go on camera and try to be, be uh, pretend to be a coach himself. And they ask me for coaching because they know that my game is light years beyond theirs. I refused. He's a little dork. He told me he wasn't even at 100 late count yet. The appeal, I guess, is that he's a short Indian weirdo that, that supposedly gets laid. His infield is trash. He's just walking around with rising intonation. Uh, he's breaking like all the basic fundamental rules. Hi, I'm Justin. I'm from Canada. I love you. You want to get married? That's like his game in a nutshell. Okay, it's it's like a little fucking annoying RST Tyler clone. 
He's now teamed up with Modern Life Dating and David Bond. That should tell you a lot as well. His real name is Siddhartha, by the way, like the, the classic book. Siddhartha is a pretty good book, by the way. It's it's about a, a you know the path to enlightenment and nirvana. The summary of that book is basically like he gets good with girls. That's unfulfilling. He gets good with business, makes a bunch of money. That's unfulfilling. You know, he, he basically like tries various worldly pleasures and is left unfulfilled. And then he finds peace in the river at the end. So there you go. Just saved you some time. Uh, how do women determine if you are high value? It's a lot of things, right? It's how you carry yourself. It's how you come across. Are you soft spoken or do you speak with conviction? Are you a pussy in any sense of that word? Or are you a man with balls? Okay. Are you comfortable in your own skin? Do you have a bunch of shit going on? Is, are most things not a big deal to you, whether they work out or not? Are you accustomed to, to having things go your way and, and um, you know, making things happen and being able to get hot girls? Right? There's a lot that goes into it. Me and Bulldog Mindset did a whole stream about this a week or two ago. You can check in my lives to get a more thorough discussion about that. Um, but it is women make a pretty quick calculation about that. Okay, like you can look at someone the same way a woman would and think, is this guy a pussy? And you'll usually line up in agreement and you can make that decision in like half a second. How do people make that decision? How can you look at a guy and say that guy's a fucking pussy? Ask yourself that. I have videos on depussification. <laughs> depussification 101, very valuable video. I was pretty fucking hammered when I made that, but go watch that. Um. You said you're good at networking. Um, introduce yourself to people like you would in cold approach. Find out what they do professionally or what kind of interests they have and see if any of those can align with what you're doing or what you're... Like yesterday, I spoke to the uh, one of the founders of OnlyFans and we're talking about getting our content featured on the front page of OnlyFans. All right, he's a big fan of my content and he like got a lot of success with chicks right he's also involved in only fans so that helps but got a lot of success with my with chicks utilizing my stuff and has watched my videos for years and they want us to make content for something called only fans tv and so me and liz are going to start doing podcasts where we're featuring content on only fans homepage and we're going to try to get endorsements from various porn stars only fans models and cam girls uh to their followings advertising my dating services so they can fuck girls like that in real life and not just jerk off to them and i, and I fucked my share of uh porn stars and cam girls that i'm going to use as alliances in the industry um snapper has a, a good network of high quality portrait photographers again i would be featuring content on their platform to help men that are just fucking hopeless and jerking off to learn real game and break out of that. So, to, and again, it's it's like a platform. They're trying to compete with YouTube. This OnlyFans TV. It's they're offering content like that. Um, but that was an example of networking, right? So you can go, you can go to like a conference or whatever, and you can just go and introduce yourself to a bunch of people, or when you meet friends of friends or whatever, you find out which industry people are in and what kinds of stuff they have going on. And you see if any of that can align with with your projects or your visions for anything like that right and over time you build up a network like that and you have a bunch of connections and you align with other people that have connections and then you can reach out to your network to help you with various things took a deck millionaire friend on a few nights out last week showed him your system made him a face half profile he went from years of struggling to banging his first eight more girls lined up Yep, it's literally that simple. Um, put him in contact with me to go over kind of a full, you know, full length sol solution for coaching. It's at John at JohnAnthonyLifestyle.com. Screenshot of that. Um, getting guys laid with your advice has helped me. Yeah, there's direct parallels of business and sales as well. Um,
Let's see. What's the best business model right now for anyone to free up as much time as possible for pickup? Um, your own company or working purely remote, right? You don't want to be stuck in an office because then you can't do daytime dates. Um, if you're just limited to nighttime slots, then that cuts out a whole big part of the day. So I would at the very least get a job where you can fully work from home. Um, I need to jump on a, a company meeting shortly. We got, we got through most of the questions, but I'll just leave you with like a, like a quick uh, recap. Okay, but first just talk, call out those things again. We have a Miami immersion coming up July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. I'll be running that personally. It's a five-day immersion with two elite level coaches on my team. There literally is one spot. It's not fucking marketing gimmick. There's literally one spot and there's about 12 guys considering it, trying to make finances or, or the dates work. Um, hit me up ASAP. It'll probably be gone in the next day or two. ASAP if you want that. San Diego program is the 16th, 17th, and 18th this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Josh is running that. We had three guys in there. One guy had a conflict with his kids, and now there's one spot open on that as well. Um, hit me up ASAP if you want to join that. We could potentially get someone in on a discount. And uh, we're not sure yet. I think we're going to turn it into a, into a training potentially because it's going to be like fully value packed. We need to figure that all out. But we're, we have like an MTV crib style mansion. We're paying like over 10 K for, for five days. We're, we're hiring two top end videographers to document the whole experience. It's over 10 K, right? Like we're going all out on this. Um, and you know, it's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, as a recap, and for the eight-week program, go to platinumdatingsystem.com. But as a recap, okay, don't let societal pressures, parental pressures, or pressures from your girlfriend, or, or any girl for that matter, or anyone for that matter, push you into a marriage. Do it for the right reasons when the time is right for you, if and only if you want to. It's not something that you should feel obligated to do at some point in your life. Don't feel like you're not conforming to society's wishes properly and you're an outcast if you decide to get, not, not to get married. There's nothing wrong with not getting married at all, okay? And also, if you do decide to go that route, make sure it, it's not just for the girl's looks, right? And red pill coaches don't have their, that problem because their girls look like shit, but you need to make sure that she stands on her own and that it, it hits most, if not all, of the qualities that you look for that you'd want in a partner, a lifetime partner. And make sure that you get a prenup if you do go that route and also consider the option of just doing uh, someone as a life partner where you don't have the label on the legal contract, but for all intents and purposes, it is like she's married. Um, <laughs> again, it, you know, which girls would cheat varies from girl to girl, but the guys that train through my system know exactly what to do and say to fuck most girls. Um, okay. So yeah, thank you guys for, for attending. Uh, I have a new video dropping on the channel in like 15 minutes. I'll try to react to the relevant parts of the Tate value attainment collab, which is fucking disgusting and disgraceful. And I will um, be going live again either tomorrow or Friday. So look out for that. And I still need to slot in an infield breakdown sometime soon, which I've been promising for some weeks, but we'll, we'll get to that hopefully pretty soon. Um, the new studio is ready, so we're going to start doing podcasts in there as well. And I, we're building a, yet another, there's a lot of rooms in this house. We're building another area, so I'll move out of this area here soon enough, I think. Um, okay, so thank you everybody for tuning in, and I will see everyone soon. Um, i trying to think of anything else I forgot. And let me know in the comments too, like, if you'd like me to do like, we're getting a lot of good feedback on like those videos where I, where I talk about AI and, and some of these like fringe philosophical topics. Um, I love talking about that stuff. Let me know if you'd like to see more of that stuff um, or, or what kind of content you guys would like to see more of to help, help guide things in the right direction. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody. Uh, and I will see